All right, we're jumping into 2 Samuel 17. And we started a bit on the topic that uh, uh, there are these different counselors who have served David, and now they are divided. One is uh, intently planning to serve Absalom, and the other still wants to serve David, although he hasn't been open about that. He's, he's keeping what he's up to hidden. So, let's see. One's loyal, one's not. We're going to read in chapter 16, verses... 16, is that right? Or I think it's... I think it's 17. 17, 17 thank you. Read uh, chapter 17, verses 1 through 4, about the council of Ahithophel. If someone would like to read. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose twelve thousand men, and I will and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and discouraged, and throw him into a panic, and all the people who are with him will flee. I will strike down only the king. I will bring all the people back to you as a bride comes home to her husband. You seek the life of only one man, and all the people will be at peace. And the advice seemed right in the eyes of Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Okay, thank you, Mike. What is the counsel and strategy that Ahithophel is providing to Absalom? What's he telling him to do? Almost back at night. And Okay. So a night attack. Okay. So a surprise. Surprise attack. And he's weary alone. Say again. Just kill David. Yeah. Right? Got to get rid of David. If you get rid of David, the others have no reason to continue, do they? No. Cut the head off. Yeah. Anything else? Makes people back to. Well, the town that they were in originally. Okay, so so there's going to be taking back home. Ta taking the people back home. Okay, that's a pretty good summary of what's going on here. Um, what do you think about uh, Ahithophel's advice? Does this sound like wise advice to you? Yeah. No. If you're a military man, Gail. If you're a military man, yeah. How, how so, Mark? How so? Well, you want to attack when the person least expected, or the road less likely taken. Okay. Surprise. Element of surprise. So David has just left the city, hasn't he? He's just fled out. Uh, they're just getting organized. They're just uh, they're just getting settled into a life on the run, more or less. And before they get too organized, maybe the idea is Ahithophel says we can fall on them and we can we can end this now, strike quick, and end it now. That's that's the plan, as it seems to be. Yeah. You know, remember a few years ago they were cutting people's heads off. Uh, over in the Middle East, yes. Are they still doing that? I don't know. Is that still going on? Yes, or worse. Or worse. Okay. Yeah. Or worse. Yeah, they were they were doing stuff like that and making videos, and that that's to that's to scare people. They do things to scare people. Yeah, scare tactics. Um. Yeah. So they're they're after David. They're one of they're especially after David, and they think they can end this whole conflict if they can just surprise and get David. Now we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit further uh, the other counselor. Absalom talks to the other counselor, and this is actually the fellow who's loyal to David. Okay, he has stayed loyal to David. His name is Hushai. And let's see what Hushai's counsel is. It's a little bit longer, it's gonna take us a little bit to work through it. Someone read for us verses five through eight, and we'll start accounting for what Hushai says. And then when Hushai was come to Absalom, Absalom spoke unto him, saying, and, and, oh, that word is. Ahithophel. Okay, okay. Has spoken after this man, this manner shall we do after this saying, if not, uh, 
Speak thy end. Hushai said unto Absalom, the council that Absalom has given is not good at this time. For said Ishai, thou knowest thy father and his men that they be mighty men and they be shafted in their mind as a bear robs of the whips in the field and thy father is a man of war I will not lodge with the people okay so here he's beginning to give his critique of what Ahithophel has said what is it that Hushai is, is expressing concerns about as they look at the council uh, he's a man of war okay and he's not going to surrender very easily okay there's not going to be any uh, surrender Anything else that he notes in that section? They are enraged. Okay, they're, 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 they're really upset about everything that's happened. Uh, so they're gonna, be, they're gonna be motivated to fight, aren't they? Rather than uh, fall into discouragement, uh, and, and military parlance that's morale, rather than having low morale, Hushai saying, they're gonna be highly motivated. They're like a bear that lost a cup. Like a bear. Yeah, a bear that lost its cubs. They're going to be really angry. Yeah, he said it. It says here in the notes that uh, that Hushai wanted to, uh, his plan was to buy David some time. Aha! Uh -huh. By telling, by warning Absalom to prepare for a large army. Okay. Yeah, we're going to see a little bit more of the details that Hushai counsels, and it is a delay, isn't it? Ah Ahithophel says, "Let's go now." Get your people together. Let's go while they're on the run still and aren't organized, and we will get a quick victory. And Hushai is giving the opposite counsel as they go. Um, yeah, one of the things, one of the last things that he notes there is that when they set up camp, David won't be there. He's going to camp someplace else. So you can attack their camp, Hushai is saying, but you're not going to get David. He's too clever for that. And he's got a point, doesn't he? You remember how David escaped from Saul constantly in the wilderness. Now, he was a younger man at the time. Even one, even he, one pretending like he was crazy or something. Yeah, he, he, David was yeah. full of tactics, wasn't he? He was always coming up with something to get out of the trouble that he was facing. And uh, uh, he... he Hoshai's right in this respect, isn't he? That the, David is a clever yep. person to fight with. Yeah. David's not a king now. Uh, he's, been, he's, he's been pushed out by his son. His son has been declared king by the tribes, and he has taken Jerusalem. So David is with just a small group of loyal people and kind of on the run. That's, that's how it is. Now, now, I'm sure that he and his followers still see him as the king. They'll still see him that way. But Absalom, he controls what? The tribe of Benjamin? Uh, no, he's, he's, he's got loyalties from throughout Israel. Okay. okay. So we'll, we'll be coming to that question about the loyalties here in a little bit as we go through. But Absalom went to a lot of effort to get a broad support. Okay. And he was able to take Jerusalem, which is the capital. So it's like them taking over Washington, D.C., okay? And the, the president is on the run, is essentially what this looks like so far. Uh, so, so David will not be where you think he is, is one of the counsels that Hushai gives. Let's read now verses 9 through 11. Verses 9 through 11. Behold, he is hid now in some pit or in some other place. And it will come to pass when some of them be overthrown at the first, that whosoever hear it will say, There is a slaughter among the people that follow Absalom. And he also and he also that is valiant, whose heart is at, as the heart of the lion shall utterly melt. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is a mighty man, and they with be with him are valiant men. Therefore I counsel that all Israel be generally gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea for multitude, 
and that thou go to battle in thine own person. Okay. So so here we see uh, the further counsel. Where's David going to be according to Hushai? He's, he's going to be hiding somewhere. You remember when, when he was fleeing from Saul, he was hiding in places like caves and stuff. So he, he, he was uh, hard to reach, hard to get. Like, uh, let's reach back in our memories here. Osama bin Laden? Okay. They were always trying to drop some uh, big bomb into a cave and stuff like that. He was hiding anywhere he could. And then I think he went over into like Pakistan. He went over into the neighboring country with people that were local there that were supportive of him and kept him hidden. He was in a hole. He was in a hole. When they found Saddam Hussein, where did they find him? Oh. Bottom of a hole. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, there's probably thousands of those caves and tunnels. I mean, they have multi, I mean, large areas under yeah. It's amazing that they found it. Yeah. They had to have some intel. Yeah, if you're clever and you you don't mind the trouble yep. of hiding that way, you can really disappear. Yep. And that that's what Hushai thinks David is doing here. He's off the grid. You're not going to catch him. Uh, look with me at uh, verse, uh, let's see, verse 10. Then even the valiant man whose heart is like the heart of a lion will utterly melt with fear. He's afraid that what's going to happen is... Um, that Absalom will go out there and he will attack the, the, the people that are following David and that others are going to look at this and they're going to say, uh, look how they've slaughtered them. Look at, uh, look at the battle that's taken place. And it's going to be discouraging and disheartening and will uh, disunite the people rather than unite them. So his argument is go from Dan, which is the northernmost part of Israel, down to Beersheba, which is the bottom of Israel. Okay? We might say it this way. Uh, go from coast to coast. Okay? Go from coast to coast and unite everybody before you launch your attack. That's essentially what his argument is. So I'm going to put the word unite. Unite the people. And that's definitely going to take time, isn't it? Because you got to go around and talk to people to make all of that happen. It's really going to take some time. Let's see. Got to get to my other set of notes. There we go. Verses 11 to 14 now. But my counsel is that all Israel be gathered to you from Dan to Beersheba as a sand by the sea for multitude, that you go to battle in person. So we sh shall come upon him in some place where he is to be found, and we shall light upon him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him, and all the men with him, not one will be left. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city, and we shall drag him to the valley until not even a pebble is to be found there. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord has ordained defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel, so that the Lord might bring harm upon Absalom. Okay, so here is the rest of Hushai's plan. He wants to uh, focus on this uniting of all of Israel into one large group. Uh, he's saying David's like this, uh, you'll be like this, and even if David hides in a city, you'll be able to pull every pebble of it down, because you'll have so many people following you. The group will be so big. Whereas if you go out on this night raid, you don't know what you're running into. You don't know what you're going to encounter. And uh, how did, uh, there's other people standing around listening to all of this. How do they respond to Hushai's advice? They agree with him. They give him a thumbs up, don't they? They say, this is, this is better counsel. This is better counsel than Ahithophel's get it, get it done quick, strike fast plan. Um, look at the last verse that we read there. 
because this is the first time in I don't know how long we've been looking at a lot of history here this is the first time the writer for the book comes in and he makes a theological statement he speaks on behalf of God okay and what does he say that God does he's ordained the defeat of of, of Absalom of, uh, and uh, Ahithophel the counselor yeah it, they're not easy to read some of them yeah he's ordained his defeat God's hand is in this the writer is saying God is acting through these two men yeah it says that he's got to hold Absalom accountable for his sins hmm yeah Abs you remember what when David when David erred it troubled a lot of people didn't it? It troubled David too. It troubled David. It troubled it troubled more or less though the immediate family and some of David's men. What has Absalom's sin done? It troubled the whole, whole country. It's it troubled the whole nation, hasn't it? Yeah. It's troubled the whole nation and he is going to bear the responsibility and wait for that level of trouble <laughs> that he has brought. Um, I probably shouldn't go there. <laughs> I had a thought of something I might say, but maybe I should just leave, leave that alone. <laughs> uh, we'll stay focused right here. Uh, but but uh, cling to that to that passage because it shows us that in all of the things that are happening there's a lot happening here isn't there lots of history in all of this history God is at work God is acting now I'll ask this question is God working through history today mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Possible, yeah. Sure. okay so even through good or bad God is working Okay. And it's really not up to us to question God. Yeah. God has his hand on our futures, doesn't he? He is involved in what's happening around us and in our lives. And we could maybe even go so far as to say in our nations and the world. Right? It's his world, isn't it? It's his world. Because even in hard times, he's working. Yes. There's a lesson to be learned here and there. Mm. We, we, we may not understand it, but we don't really question it because we know he's in charge. Okay. There's a reason, there's a reason for everything. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm. so when bad things are happening, weird and bad things happening, is that God at work? Yeah. Or us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Israel is sort of an example. Right mm. Now. Mm. The the troubles that are happening there. Yeah. We have to be cautious, don't we? When we see something terrible happen that we don't say, well, that's God doing that. Just because something happens doesn't mean that God's responsible for it happening because we have a responsibility two in life don't we yes. we bear responsibility for our decisions and our things okay but God is at work in and through people in and through history to make things happen yeah yeah what's sad about it is and the Bible just tells us all about it that there'll never be peace in the Middle East and mm. so I mean people people say, oh that's sad that this is happening but it's always going to happen Mm. So, yeah. Sadly, it's in, in, I mean, from what the Bible tells us, it's never going to stop. Yeah, we've talked before about one of the problems with that part of the world is that it sits at the middle of the largest land masses on the face of the earth, doesn't it? Yeah. You have Europe and Asia and Africa all connecting at that point, and that's one of the reasons it's always been controversial. Mm -hmm. It's because of the the trade and the fight to control trade that happens in that place and Jerusalem's right like in the middle of it <laughs> Russia wants all their land back and all this I mean it's always something yeah 
Yeah. My dad's been dead 70 years. My younger he told me this war is a women's war. Uh, never be peace anymore. Yeah, G Jesus warns us that uh, that these are among the signs of his return, is that there will be conflicts. And, uh, um, yeah, uh, but we're always wondering, is this, is this a sign for the end, or are we still waiting? We're always wondering these things. I thought I saw a hand over here, Margaret. So he lets it happen, but it's because I think there's something to be learned by it. Mm. We learn things through history, don't we? We learn through experience and what we see. Yeah, we're supposed to. <laughs> it's like somebody said, we're supposed to. You know, we, they, they sold us Alaska. Yeah. They don't want it back. <laughs> you never know. If, the, if there's something well, we bad, yeah. If there's something there they need, they'll want it back. They sold it way too cheap. Yeah. So, so, so what the writer is teaching us here is that God is at work in human history. He is at work in human history. And uh, uh, we need to be patient and prayerful and observing all of this. There's someone, someone speaking over here. Hey, Joe? Does not Satan have something to do with this also? Well, there's different, there's different wills out there, aren't there? There's the human wills that are at work. There's God's will. And then there's the will of the evil one. Right. Yeah, he has, he has a hand in things too. Uh, the book of Chronicles brings out some examples of that. Uh, that uh, it's Satan who's uh, in, inciting people to do things and make confusion. Yeah. Uh, but the big point from the, the writer of uh, 2 Samuel here is that uh, this, God's hand is at work. God's hand is at work in all of this, and uh, despite the chaos that we witness, trust that God is at work. All right, verses 15 to 17 now. Then said Hushai to, unto Zidok and to Ephther, the priest, thus and thus did the did Apathel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the kings be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahasmus stayed by in Rogel, mm -hmm. for they might not be seen to come unto the city. And a wench went and told them, and they did, they went and told King David. Okay, there we go. So here is here where we heard about this earlier. There's a bit of a spy operation going on, isn't there? Who's who's involved in that activity? Who are these people? Uh, there's a woman involved. Yeah, the King James calls her what? Wench. Wench. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a little rough, huh? <laughs> so there's a woman involved, but there's there's also some men involved. Who are these men? Priests. The, okay, they're priests. What was that? It's King David's. David helps organize this, doesn't he? But the people in Jerusalem are uh, Zadok and Abiathar. There are leading priests in the, in the city. Okay, They're there with the Ark of the Covenant. And there's two other fellows. Who are the other fellows? Jonathan and Ahimahaz. Ahimahaz. Okay. The, yeah, the, that's them. These are, I believe, sons of Zadok and Abiathar. Okay? And they're, they're waiting for news from their fathers so that they can take that news to David. And the go-between is... The wench. The wench. <laughs> Not a happy translation. <laughs> it's because they let the women travel freely. Okay. So she's going to be less suspicious, uh, suspected, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if they see a big sword or anything like that, you just walk. Yeah, if, if they see the priests coming and going, they're going to know something's up, yeah. right? Because they're they're officials, they're leaders. Uh, but if this woman is coming and going, they're probably not going to pay so much attention. Uh, we've seen this in some of the modern stuff, haven't we? Where where they they recruit women and even children to participate in some of the war activities, and uh, sometimes with very horrifying results. Uh, but uh, this this lady is supposed to bring them bring them word from the city. They're talking about the plan of Hushai and Ahithophel. Why does David need to know Ahithophel's plan? If Hushai's plan's winning out, why should he know about Ahithophel's plan? He might just do it anyway. It might happen anyway. And it, it's talking about the surprise night attack, isn't it? So it's it's going to be a word to David and say, you and your people better hide. <laughs> yeah, even on a smaller scale, that, that attack still might happen. Sure. Sure. Yeah, Any anything anything might happen at this point. There's confusion, isn't there? Even the woman that comes may kill David. You never can tell. Oh, sure. Though things like that can happen, can't they? Yeah, there's a story in the book of Judges where one of the judges goes down uh, to another nation. I want to say it's Edom the Edomites and he goes to that king and uh, he has a sword strapped to his leg but he's left-handed so it's it's over on his right hip to draw out and they, they the guards check him but they check him like he's a right-hander and they don't find the sword and so he goes into the chamber for the council with this guy pulls his dagger out and gets him so, so, yeah, they've got to be especially careful under these circumstances, don't they? It, 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 it recalls for care. All right, so here's the, the spy operation in action. Someone read for us verses 18 to 20 now. 18 to 20. Nevertheless, it led Solomon and old Absalom, but they went both of them away quickly and came to a man's house in the Hurum which had a well of the court where those eight went down. And the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground corn thereon. And the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman to the house, they said, Where is Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said unto them, They be gone over the brook of the water. Okay, so something goes wrong here. Thanks for reading. Uh, what is it that's gone wrong? Someone saw me. Okay, somebody, a, a lad, it says, sees these two priests who are hanging out waiting for the information. What do they do when this, when this kid sees them? Okay, they go to hide. Where do they hide? In a well. In a well. Okay. In a well. Uh, wells in that part of the world. I'm going to make a little circle like this. And these are, these are dug by hand. They're, they're a shaft. It's a shaft well. They dig down like this. Uh, so here is ground, here's ground level close to the top. And they're, they're way down inside of the ground. And the water, uh, it's uh, down to you go down to the water table, and the water will collect there, and it's clean water because it's been filtered through all that ground, and they're hanging out down inside of there. Um, that sounds safe to you? It's been my experience. Well, water is extremely cold. It will be very cold down here, won't it? Yes. It'll be very cold. The the deeper you go down into the to the ground like that the the air above isn't going to affect so much and it will feel quite cold in the notes it says that it was likely a dry sister could have been dry yeah okay yeah. <laughs> when uh, when i was a kid the barn that we had in knoxborough new york had a um a um, spring house and the water ran into the in the the spring water ran into the that part of the barn, and there was a cistern in the corner, 
and it would fill up with spring water. You milk your cows and you'd set the milk cans in that water until the truck could come take them away. And that kept them cool, kept the milk from spoiling. And the water was cold enough, Diane, <laughs> that you wouldn't want to be in it. <laughs> so whether it's wet or dry, uh, if it's wet, they're really cold. But if, even if it's dry, there it's it's cooler temperatures down here where they're at. Uh, uh, maybe even cold enough to keep milk. <laughs> how would they get out? How'd they get in? Yeah, how'd they get in? <laughs> yeah, pro probably a rope. Probably a rope. Uh, some sometimes there 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 are some really large wells in this part of the world where they have a staircase. Actually, it's so big. And there's a staircase that spirals down the outside wall to go down to the they bottom. They built it up while they were digging. They sculpted out the stairway. Yes, they built that stairway into the whole process as they dug. Uh, this well's smaller, though. And we know that because how does she hide them? <laughs> yeah, she covers it, doesn't she? With grain and throw grain on it. Yeah, she covers it and then and throws a, a heap of grain on the top of it there. And uh, that way, she, she makes it look like it's a workspace, doesn't she? Like it's a table. Smart She's a smart winch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Billy. They did not know that it was a well? They, they, they may not have recognized that it was a well. Uh, because, uh, you know, the, the top of the well would have been like a pile of rocks uh, in a circle. And then once you take away that look... It maybe just looked like she had set up like a table on top of rocks, and that's how it would have appeared do, to them. Do you know if they had that they hit towards the top of the well or the bottom of the well? Or? This would have been over the top of the well at ground level, yeah. that they that she would have covered it and turned it into a workspace for working grain. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's what she's up to here. She's she's clever, isn't she? <laughs> She's clever, saving these guys' lives in that, down in that well. Let's see, verse 18. A young man saw them, told Absalom, so both of them went away quickly to a house of a man at Bahurim with a well in his courtyard. So it's right inside of the courtyard, which was a common workspace for the women. Okay, They wouldn't typically be working so much outside of the home but they would have been working in this space. Uh, it's uh, Israelite houses were built like this. And you'd have a front gate here, and then these would be different rooms that you had inside of the building. And the well apparently is built or dug right inside of that workspace where the women would commonly have been working in the courtyard. They'd even have like ovens and stuff out here in the courtyard for cooking outside. Uh, so that's, that's the location uh, that we should have in our heads as we read the story. Let's see. Oh, and th these guys even know the, them by name. Look at verse 20. When Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? They know these guys, don't they? They recognize them. They know them by name. And then she says, they have gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. They didn't see any water there. The well was covered up. They didn't see a well or nothing. Okay. Is she, is she telling them the truth? No. no. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Because... Because if there's water at the bottom, they're over the water, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But the way she says it makes it sound like they've crossed over the Jordan. That's what they're thinking. And so they give up and they go away. She's a pretty smart wench, wouldn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be careful with that word wench. I, 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 you didn't come up with it, no. <laughs> we we want to be careful with that word <laughs> oh my word so this is this is getting just all the more complicated here isn't it with spies and and we've got spies and scouts 
And uh, but the local population, how are they responding to the situation? They're upset. They're upset. Do you think it was risky for this woman to take these guys into her house? Very risky. Very risky. What does that say about her and what she's thinking and believing? She's, very brave. she's acting bravely. She supports David. She supports David. This is a, one of the first indicators that we have that apart from that group that left with David, there are other people in Israel who don't want Absalom to be the king. They want David. Let's watch for that as we read on a little bit further. I'm going to read verses 21 and 22. Uh, I know we've been running into some difficult uh, names and stuff, but we'll, we'll be getting some more as we go forward. So I'm going to be doing some of the reading. 21 and 22. After they had gone, the men came up out of the well and went and told King David, they said to David, Rise and go quickly over the water. Using the same expression there, doesn't, don't they, about going over the water. For thus and so has Ahithophel counseled against you. Then David arose and all the people who were with him, and they crossed the Jordan. By daybreak not one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. So this is an operation that's taking place through the night, right? Ahithophel's counsel said, attack them tonight and uh, David and his men retreat across the Jordan overnight okay they're putting a natural barrier between them of the Jordan River before the troops can come to attack let's see I'm going to read verse 23 now and we'll talk about this a little bit Verse 23, when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and went off home to his own city. He set his house in order and hanged himself. And he died and was buried in the tomb of his father. What do you make of this? He felt that David uh, come back and take taking killing for turning against me. Okay, so it's it's entirely possible that with the with the counsel of Hushai, David's going to be able to make a turnaround here, isn't he? And if Ahithophel's been given this counter counsel, he's going to become a target, isn't he, of David? Yeah. Any other thoughts about Ahithophel's? reaction here but isn't Absalom on the side of, the, of that guy yes Absalom Absalom and Ahithophel Ahithophel is a counselor to Absalom but in this case uh, Ahithophel's counsel did not get followed by Absalom he instead went ho with Hushai's counsel yeah, but David, David, David should really be angry at Absalom yeah, they believe more in Hushai than Absalom so they thought they he felt that he might as well just kill himself because they're not listening to him anyway. Okay. And yeah, there might be not there. There might be fear here of David coming back and getting revenge on him. That might be a part of it, but it almost sounds like he's despairing, doesn't it? He's just given up. I mean, he is. He has the king's ear. He could counsel him further, but it, it sounds like he is despairing. And just giving up. I see two hands. I'm going to take Jim, then Mike. Go ahead. It also says that God was with David, not Absalom. Yes, God is. And that's the reason that he hung himself because he knew he couldn't win. Oh, maybe he sees it in that way. Maybe he sees, he, he thinks God's hand is against him. He's talking about a surprise at, at, at night attack. I don't know how you can take 12,000 people and be a surprise. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose they don't all show up at the same time, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe he uh, realized he gave, uh, maybe he realized he gave uh, not so good advice. That he had not given good advice? Yeah. He's, he's at least upset because his advice isn't being listened to, is it? Yeah. 
uh, he's, he seems to be upset and frustrated because of that. Mike, you had your hand up. You guys kind of answered it. Was, I was just reading the notes and it said perhaps he recognized God's hand at work against him. Okay. So he kind of knew he was doomed. Yeah. And he, he, just, he just despairs yeah. and gives up. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty wild, though, to go from being a counselor to the king, right, like a member of the cabinet, to doing this with himself. Uh, it's, a, it's really kind of a broad change in his life. Lord have pretty. I'm going to read now verses 23 to 29, which is going to end the chapter. And we're going to see a, a list of and deeds and think about the future of David as I read through this section and all these different expressions or different things in the list then David came to Mahanaim and Absalom crossed the Jordan with all the men of Israel so this is the big attack okay he's launching the big attack now Absalom had set Amasa over the army instead of Joab. Uh, Joab, I believe, is on David's side. Okay, he's, a, he's D David's general. So the the two generals are actually akin to each other, is what it's telling us here. Amasa was the son of a man named Ithra, the Ishmaelite, who had married Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeruiah, Joab's mother. And Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. So this is, uh, this is the plains region across, uh, across the Jordan River, east of the Jordan. When David came to Mahanaim, Shobi the son of Nahash from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and Machir the son of Amiel from Lodabar, and Barzillai the Gileadite, from Rogalim. Are you sure you don't want to read this? <laughs> I'm doing fine. Okay, carry on, carry on. Brought beds, basins, and earthen vessels, wheat, barley, flour, parched grain, beans, and lentils, honey and curds, and sheep and cheese from the herd, for David and the people with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. What do you make of all of that? What's happening here? Keeping their strength up. Okay, keeping their strength up. Well, the Lord's been uh, taking care of David and his uh, people. With these, uh, at least they're giving him uh, supplies um, that is he and his men would be. Okay, so a number of persons are bringing supplies to David. He has more support than Absalom does. Well, whether he has more than Absalom does, I don't, I don't know, but David is getting significant support, isn't he? He's getting significant support <laughs> They're coming out, and uh, they're even bringing beds, aren't they? Yeah, a lot of hospitality. There's, a, there's tremendous hospitality coming to David and his people in the wilderness. Go ahead. Absalom has a, an army with him, but the people of the country seem to be backing David. Okay. Um, oh, back in, uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to World War II, and this happens in a lot of wars. They, they would have, uh, the, the allies of course had their big armies, but they would, also, uh, they would also look for help with a group they called the partisans. The partisans, okay? So in any one of the nations where the Nazis had invaded, there were people who were like, I don't like this. <laughs> the underground. The underground. And they were looking to support someone else, and they would be often uh, bold, desperate people, okay, who would try to undermine the operations of the big armies that were moving around. And, and these people coming to David are coming like partisans to help David against the official armies 
that are coming with Absalom. Sherry. Isn't this kind of a sign of God's hand in this and approval? Hmm. Yeah, yes, I, I think that they would certainly see it that way, that, that God is, here's God at work again, supplying David. David is the, is the uh, legitimate king. He's the right king uh, against this uh, usurper. And uh, he's building up David's people for the sake of what's going to be a coming battle. Okay? And preparing for all of that. Yeah. Partisan, partisan warfare here. We've got a few more minutes. Let's go ahead and jump into ver or not verse chapter 18. Uh, I think I've uh, read most of the, the wild names. Someone read verses 1 through 5, if you would. 1 through 5. <coughs> then David mustered the men who were with him and set over commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. And David sent out the army, one-third under the command of Joab, one-third under the command of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and one-third under the command of Etai the Gittite. And the king said to the men, I myself will also go out with you. But the men said, You shall not go out, for if we flee, they will not care about us. If half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore, it is better that you send us help from the city. The king said to them, Whatever seems best to you, I will do. So the king stood at the side of the gate, while all the army marched out by hundreds and by <coughs> thousands. And the king ordered Joab and Abishai and Ittai, Deal gently for the my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders about Absalom. Okay, thank you. Uh, who are the three commanders that David puts in charge? Abishai, Akali, and Joab. So Abishai, Joab, Ittai, he's divided it, the, his army or, or set them up in three groups. What kind of numbers are we looking at now? You remember when David first went out, they were pretty few in number. What are they, what are they commanding thousands. now? They've got thousands. They've got thousands. They've got thousands now. Uh, now we should note that the word that they're using here, it's a military term and it doesn't absolutely mean a particular number because company strengths can rise and fall, right? It can be from this to this, but it's when they use that word thousand it's a big number isn't it and uh, that's the situation is definitely changing where's david going to be here's these three bodies of troops where's david going to be he's back at the gate okay he's going to be in the rear isn't he he doesn't want to be but they told him to stay back there <laughs> but they tell him to stay back there why what's the point because if he died it would be over it would be over yeah that, and that was part of the plan from Ahithophel from the beginning, wasn't it? Right. right. Get David, and this will all be over. Yeah. Yeah. And he also pointed out that if some of them died or if they retreated, that they will not, uh, they will not care. It shows that uh, David's probably worth a whole lot more to them than uh, they yes. are. Yes. Yeah. So, so they say if you know if, if half of our guys are gone, that won't be such a big deal. To the enemy they're still just looking for the one commander the king the king is the key to this whole whole thing and that's why for example when uh when shots are fired okay they grab the president or most recently the uh, candidate for president this is uh, trump they you saw the the guys jump him basically they they jump him and get him out of there as quickly as they can so that the assassination doesn't take place right so so that's that is their job and and something similar is happening here with uh with these leaders they put their stuff in, in the you know they can get shot yes put your life on the line, oh yes yes yeah that's that's that calling it's a it's a very dangerous calling 
and throughout our history we've had this happen too many times haven't we yep. too many times uh, where people are trying to solve the questions of the day <coughs> by killing somebody That's not just like our servicemen they they put their lives when they sign up oh yes you know? Oh yes. You never know what what's going to happen. At any yeah. time, they can be called to go. You don't know. Yeah, we were we were there when uh, when Christian went into the guard and we heard his oath. He's standing there like this. He was kind of skinny then. <laughs> now he's kind of bulky. He's getting bigger all the time. And we were there when he turned blue. They call it the ceremony of turning blue. That's the uh, the the sign of an infantryman. Uh, and I think mom put that on him. Blue cord. blue cord. The blue cord went on. I got to put on the ranger tab. I was excited about that. Uh, but yeah, they're laying their life on the line. They, they truly are. And he's, uh, my son's talked about that. He, he has a, a genuine sense of that. Just like firemen and Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. People don't realize, but they really just, they get up every morning, they want to go do their job and come home at night. Sure. But they are in that line. Yes. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that we have the, you, you hear me praying each week for military and first responders. Yes. It's because they, there's, a, there's a level of danger in their calling that uh, many of us do not experience in life. Yeah, Jim, you get the last word, brother, we're going to pray. Well, I shouldn't say if a general pastor split his ranks too. General, oh, General Custer split his, well, in this case, though, We'll, see, we'll have to see what David does. In this case, he's trying to organize them, right? It's not so much about splitting them, in this case, as it is organizing them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the history of Israel and the truths that it teaches us, most importantly today, about how you are at work in the midst of this history and in the lives of your people. And we ask, O oh Lord our God, that you would watch over leaders in our nation, no matter what the party they may be that they are representing. Watch over the uh, servicemen and our first responders, O oh God. Keep them safe in their call and line of duty. We remember in particular Matt Emmerich today, dear Lord, as he is starting his service as a police officer. Keep him safe. Grant him wisdom, O oh God. And uh, give us, O oh Lord, in our nation, a true sense of law and order for the good of our people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, we ask it. Amen.